Last week we were in chapter 12 of Acts. God bless you and welcome to Growing in His Word. It's amazing because God allowed Peter to be freed from prison, but I believe that the church was praying for Peter so much and so fervently on their knees every day that God said, you know what? I'm going to whack Herod too. (laughs) And he did. And so what happened was Herod was taken out because he was a bitter, ugly, angry, violent man. And he died the way that he lived. Jesus told Peter, if we live by the sword, you'll die by the sword. And he was an angry, bitter man. And Herod was killed because he was he didn't give God the glory. Listen, Jesus wants the glory. It's amazing. We're in chapter thir- chapter 12, but we're going to go to 13. And it was amazing last week because... The gospel is real, and and you guys are out there. I feel the Lord, you know, not feel, but the Lord's telling my heart, telling me to tell you that, hold on, separate yourself from the flesh, because this is what this next chapter is about, man. You're thinking, Charles, what does chapter 13 have to do with me? It's about Jesus and the Holy Spirit and how the Holy Spirit, Spirit is going to fill and direct you. Watch this. Paul was filled with the Holy Spirit. He's on a journey. He's on his mission. He's, this is, I mean, this is his, the third mission. I mean, it's third time, man. It's amazing because Jesus is not dead and his spirit is with us. And this is where we as believers understand that God loves you and he wants to separate you, you have to make that choice to separate your life for Christ. Listen, we're living in the last days, man. We can see the enemy trying to choke out believers through political systems, through school systems, and to try to hold down believers. And it's not about holding us down. It's about Christ living in us and the Holy Spirit sending us out. Father, we come before you, Lord. We thank you for the book of Acts chapter 13, Lord. Lord, we know, Father, like Paul was on the missionary trips, Lord, we know that these missionary journeys were set out for your glory. And Lord, we want to glorify you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Holy Spirit, use me for your glory. In the name of Jesus, amen. Listen, Luke is repeating Paul's continuing of preaching in the synagogues. Why? In Hebrew, Lama. Lama because the temple, Paul had a burning sensation in his heart to reach the Jews. And forgive me for you speaking Hebrew because I'm reaching out to the Hebrews. Listen. It's about the whole world. Paul came in and he separated Jew from Greek, Asia to African, and he said, you know what? We're all equal. The Holy Spirit wants to dwell in everybody. Amen? Amen. And so now we're in 13. We're now in the church that was in Antioch. There were certain prophets and teachers, Barnabas Simeon, who was called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Manin, who had been brought up with Herod and Tetrarch, and Saul, Listen to this, verse 2, as they ministered to the Lord and fasted. Listen, they fasted. They fasted. They were serious. We need to be serious believers. Listen, they fasted because they had the Holy Spirit. They wanted to see the Holy Spirit work. Listen, watch. They fasted, okay? As they ministered, Okay, as he ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Spirit said, now separate to me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called him. Then having fasted and prayed and they laid hands on them, they sent them away. Listen, I want you to understand something. If you go to Galatians chapter 3, 3, it states that Paul was telling them, having begun in the spirit, are you now made perfect in the flesh? Listen. 
Don't begin in the spirit and end whining in the flesh. This is what happens. Listen. God bless Galatia, man. It started great in his Holy Spirit. And, and basically man messed it up. They were, he was, they were led by the spirit. Then, then what happens is, is they try to perfect it. And then they get into the flesh and it's not good and we can't perfect the Holy Spirit. We've got to continue in it. This is what God is saying to the, the, to the Galatians. And he's saying it now. Listen, he's saying, dude, do, do, organize. Don't try to organize my Holy Spirit. Let me flow in you. Just continue in it. This is what Paul's saying. Listen, now he's separating him. He's separating him. He's saying, look, listen, lay hands on him. I've called them. Then having fasted and prayed and laid hands on them, they sent them away. Listen, if God's called you for some work, be obedient and do it. This is what he's saying. Look, verse four says, so being sent out by the Holy Spirit, they went out, they went down to Socia. And from there, they sailed to Cyprus. And when they arrived in Salmis, they preached the word of God in the synagogues of the Jews. They also had John as their assistant. He was their minister. It's amazing because as the Lord carried out what God had given them to do as prophets and teachers, their ministry to the church became their ministry to the Lord wherever they were. We got to serve Jesus wherever we are. We got to say, look, God is not forget. He has not forgotten us, man. God's word is alive today. And it's alive like a, like it was 3,000 years ago, 2,000 years ago. We need to understand that Jesus Christ wants to direct our paths. He wants to show us a new way in life. He wants to grab us into a loving relationship. This is the time when Rome, Rome was bustling with false gods. They were making statues everywhere, man. This is the third journey. Paul was out there and he was, he had a shop set up, man. He was a tent maker and he was sitting there while boats were coming in and out, man. This was the, this was the place. Listen, on the first journey, check this out. It's amazing because on the first journey, it was Asia Minor. Well, what was the second journey? Asia Minor in Greece. <laughs> what was the third mission? Asia Minor greets again. Then he goes to Jerusalem. Why? Why? Because this was the seaports. This was the part where the ocean was rambling with sea, with, with, with ships coming in, man. They were docking and people were going in and out of all races. And Jesus was saying, hit them with my love. Hit them with my mercy. And he would lay hands on sick people and he would tell them that Jesus Christ is God. He got kicked out of a lot of synagogues. He got persecuted. But he was obedient. Because he was called by Jesus Christ to preach the word. And he was called by the Holy Spirit. Same thing, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit never left him. And it's still available Today, this is what the message is about. Believers, the Holy Spirit wants to enter into a unique relationship with you if you allow him, allow the Holy Spirit to work and watch the power of the Holy Spirit. But the key is, are we obedient to what Jesus Christ has called us to be? And you're thinking, that's a big burden, Pastor. Oh, it's a burden. No, it's not a burden when we allow the Holy Spirit to work in our life and the fruit of the Holy Spirit starts to produce fruit, you know, like smiles. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> this, is, this is the key, allowing the Holy Spirit to go on autopilot in your life and watch Jesus move in your life and touch the lives of believers and non-believers. Listen, Paul was out there in Rome. Paul was out there in Greece. Paul was in Asia Minor, Turkey. It was it it, it it continues and on and on and on and on. He put his life on the line. And he died for Jesus. 
I'm not saying you got to go die for Jesus. I'm saying allow the Holy Spirit in your life to separate you because Jesus wants to separate you for a season, for a time to use you. Listen, we're only alive for so many years and then Jesus comes back or we go and see him. But they preached. Verse 5 says, and when they arrived in Salamis, they, they preached the word of God. They didn't sit there and go, wow, this is a cool place, dude. Let me go swim in the ocean. <laughs> no. No, they preached in the synagogues of the Jews. They also had John as their assistant because the Holy Spirit was using John to understand what was going on, man. I mean, can you imagine from the road of Damascus, Paul, blinded, all the way down to three missionaries over here. Amazing. People getting saved. He was just like, forget it. I'm just going to set up shop right here and let him go by, walk by all day. There's another one. Hey, how you doing? Making tents, working, providing for his, you know, to eat, even though God says, you know, he'll provide and he will. He's just sitting there tagging people with, with Jesus, telling them, hey, Jesus is God. Some of them thought he was nuts. But we see the facts and the reality of history through the Bible and how he wasn't nuts and how God's word is perfected by the Holy Spirit. God's word is alive. And how do we know that? Because First John says it, in the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. But then we get some of these posers. They come in. They want to take the Holy Spirit. They want to take God. They want to mock Jesus. I remember years ago, I used to tell people, hey, Jesus loves you. And then I walked, walked past them and they, I go to work. Here comes a good doer. Here comes Jesus. Oh, here comes the Jesus lover. And I'd, I'd get angry. And then God would say, uh, Joseph, don't get angry. Calm down. Pray for them. I'm like, okay, yeah, you're right. But then God would say, I'll take care of all things. Pray for everybody. That's the key. We don't want to be bitter like Herod. We don't want to be angry, upset. If you feel that way, go take a walk and breathe. And say, Lord Jesus, give me the, give me the patience, Father. If you're in that difficult season right now, say, Lord, help me. I'm, I'm tired. I don't want to, and I know you're tired. I know you're tired of driving the same route every day in your life. And you think it's, oh, it's like a repeat. It's a history. I can't stand it anymore. It's like Groundhog's Day. That's because Jesus wants to use you. You're thinking, what are you talking about? Give it to Christ. Turn it over to Jesus. Leave it at the cross. And don't go back and say, can I have that baggage, Lord? <laughs> Leave it. Look at they're preaching the gospel. They're on fire. The church is growing even though it's being persecuted. Adversity is everywhere. But Luke is repeating that Paul is continuing to preach in the synagogues and in the temples. And there's no more laws, no ethnics, no nothing but the blood of Jesus Christ. And only the Holy Spirit, led by the Holy Spirit, powered by the Holy Spirit, just like growing in, the, in his word. Verse 6 says, Now when they had gone through the Isle of, of Paphos, they found a certain sorcerer, Ooh, uh, you know, a false prophet, a Jew whose name was, oh, you ready for this? This is the biggest poser name. <laughs> Bar Jesus. <laughs> Wow, okay, we're going to bar Jesus. He tried to bar Jesus, all right. We ain't going to bar him. Listen to verse 7. Who was with the proconsul, Sergius and Paulus, and an intelligent man. Listen to this, intelligent man. This man called for Barnabas and Saul and sought to hear the word of God. Listen to this in verse 8. But Elymas the sorcerers, the sorcerer, for so, for so his name is translated, okay? <clears throat> Elymas, like Christmas almost. Wow, what a poser. Listen to this. Here we go. He wanted to hear the word of God. 
Okay, you, you, you want to summon Saul? You want to summon uh, Barnabas and Saul? Woo! I, I got to see this. You guys ready for this? Listen to this. But Elymas, you know, signs like Christmas name. The sorcerer, for his surname was translated, okay, withstood them. Okay, listen to this. He withstood them, seeking to turn the proconsul away from the faith. Wow, really? We see that. We see that in, uh, in, 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 in some churches today. <laughs> the question is, I'm wondering if he had watchtowers in his hands. Can you imagine that? You know, a bicycle and some watchtowers. Hey, how you doing, guys? I'm Bar Jesus. Ah, okay, yeah, right. Listen to this, man. And they're always at your door, man. With the trying to take, you know, you tell them Jesus Christ is God, right? Listen, you know, knock, knock. Who's there? It's Jehovah's Witness. Okay, well, Jesus Christ is God. Oh, no, he's not. Let me take you to this verse and that verse and this verse and that verse and that verse. This verse, that verse, then this. Here, you need a watchtower to help you out. They like to confuse you. And what does Satan do? He tries to confuse you. Jeez, wow. Let's get back onto this onto the onto the, the verse here. <laughs> and I don't laugh in a bad way. I laugh because I was in the parking lot a month ago and I led one to the Holy Spirit and Jesus Christ led me actually to lead him to Jesus Christ and his wife. They were Jehovah Witnesses and they left the faith over there. There was no faith. You got to open your eyes and read. Believers, listen, depend on the Holy Spirit, not a watchtower or a bicycle. He was trying to take him away from the faith. That's demonic. And verse 9 says, And Saul, who is also called Paul. Oh, we know Paul, man. Now he's filled with the Holy Spirit. Watch this. Watch this, man. You ready? Watch the Holy Spirit. I love it. Wow, you are so powerful. Watch this. Then Saul, who was also named called Paul, filled. You see that word filled? Filled with the Holy Spirit, looked intently at him and said, O oh, full of all deceit and all fraud, you son of the devil, <laughs> you enemy of all righteousness, will you not cease perverting the straight ways of the Lord? This is a question mark, man. Verse 11 says, And now indeed the hand of the Lord is upon you, and you shall be blind, not seeing the sun for a time. Paul's thinking, man, this is amazing. I'm going to blind you like God blinded me. <laughs> That's cool. I'm sorry, man. This is comedy. But it's real. How was Paul blinded, man, when he persecuted God? Remember when he messed with God? He was on the road to Damascus, and he basically, God said, You want to persecute me? Okay. Blind him. This dude just got blinded by Paul. <laughs> I'm so sorry. It's funny because when you mess with the Holy Spirit, you get it. We don't got to do anything but be led by the Holy Spirit and continue in the Holy Spirit. Okay? <laughs> Man, this is crazy. And, we, and immediately a dark mist fell on him and he went around seeking someone to lead him by the hand. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Believers, non-believers. Jesus Christ will not be mocked. The Holy Spirit will not be messed with. And I repeat that. It is very important. We don't mess with the Holy Spirit. You mess with the Holy Spirit and God will, he will do his thing, okay? This is what I'm trying to tell you. Be led by the Holy Spirit. When man gets involved, he messes it up. What does he do? He wants to, when God, you know, through years and years, I've seen the Holy Spirit work, but I've seen churches be built up strong and big and wow. And the pastors are like, whoa, this is a big church. Look at all these donations. And God's going, dude, you have no idea. You're not going to organize me. You're not going to put me in a jar. You're not going to put my son in a jar. You're not going to put me in a jar. Listen, some churches, not all. I am the one who gets the glory, Jesus Christ says. I'm at the right hand. 
I sit at the right hand. We are three in one, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And listen, I'm in love with you. Jesus says, I am in love with you. Will you, will you receive my love? This is what Jesus is saying. Will you love me? Will you let me love you? You ever want to be loved and just not be bothered by anybody at times in life? You feel like there's no hope. You feel like that's it. There's nowhere to go. I'm tired. I'm bouncing off walls. I have this. I don't have that. I this and this. Aren't you tired? Sometimes you just wake up and you're like, I'm tired. Well, Jesus is saying, look, they persecuted me. They're going to persecute you. It's part of the package, man. If everything was peachy, you know, if everything was going just beautifully, going the way you wanted it, listen to me. It wouldn't be right. Well, how could you say that? I'm a millionaire and I have Jesus. I'm not talking about you, man. Calm down. I'm (laughs) talking about the 90% of the other believers who aren't blessed that way. But I do love you guys who are blessed in in a billion dollar, million dollar fashion. And no, I don't want your money. Keep it. Give it to the poor. I just want to serve Jesus. And I want to tell you that he wants you to serve him. Because he's in love with you. He wants to grow with you. That's why we started growing in his word. Because he wants to show you his mercy and his love. Paul is out there showing his mercy and his love to non-believers. And he's saying, I'll make a tent for you. I'll, I'll make some tents for you. I'll make some hummus for you. I'll make the best hummus you can put in your mouth. But just when you're eating it, remember that Jesus Christ did it and he wants the glory. Paul was like that. And he went town to town and he stayed and he left and he stayed and he left. He stayed and he left. He plugged him in and he left. Because he was obedient. But he was filled with the Holy Spirit. And it wasn't him that looked intently at him and said, oh, fool of all deceit and all fraud. He knew what fraud was. The Holy Spirit knew what fraud was. You son of the devil, you enemy of all unrighteousness, you will not cease to perverting the straight ways of the Lord. Huh? Verse 11, and now indeed the hand of the Lord is upon you and you shall be blind not seeing the sun for a time. For a time. Even God has a plan for this, dude. Look, you see that? For a time. Observe that. Look at that. And immediately a dark mist fell upon him and he went around seeking someone to lead him by the hand like a baby. Help. Then the proconsul believed when he saw what had been done, being astonished at the teaching of the Lord. So here we here Luke pre- presents Sergius Paulius, the first gener- Gentile ruler to believe the gospel in the island of Cyprus. Okay? It's crazy. It's it's crazy. This is this is radical. But we're going to talk about that guy later. I mean, it's it's crazy. <sighs> He was a Gentile, but he was unlike Cornelius, man, where, where, you know, I will get into that later, but listen to this. At Antioch, it goes down. And so we go on to thir- verse 13, where it says, Now when Paul and his party set sail from Paphos, that's a weird name, I know, but listen, man, that was what it was back then. They came to Perga. Basically, they came, they came, they came in, man. Listen, they, they came in the Pamphylia and John departing from them, they returned to Jerusalem. Okay? Back to Jerusalem. Back to Jerusalem. Luke keeps illustrating this. Back to Jerusalem. I believe Paul's heart was torn between. He want, he really loved, he missed his, he missed home. He missed home. But God, he's seen the Holy Spirit. He's seen Jesus. Uh, the, I mean, he's seen what God wanted him to do, and he was obedient. It was his hometown, Jerusalem. It's beautiful there. Believe me. Trust me. My heart's torn also. But verse 14 says, But they departed from Perga, and they came to Antioch and Syria. And they went into the synagogue on Sabbath, Day and they sat down. Verse 15 says, And after reading the law and the prophets, the law and the prophets, the rulers 
of the synagogue sent to them, saying, Men and brethren, if you have any word or ex exhortation for the people, say on. So basically, John, you know, he, he returned. It says here, and John, departing from them, he returned to Jerusalem. Probably went to go get some more Bibles to come back. <laughs> it's not really what, but, you know, we don't know. Maybe he had an issue with, maybe he wanted to get some more letters. Maybe he wanted to go check on things, you know. Maybe we could sit here and go, maybe, 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 maybe. But is it salvational basis? No, it's not. So, let's stick to the Word of God, amen. What matters is, you know, whatever the trouble was between Paul and John and, you know, Mark, it was enough for Paul not to want John, Mark, to accompany him on later journeys. But John, Mark, would prove faithful later in Paul's ministry. And that's right from the commentary. Yes, I read it. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Next week, we're going to get into verse 16, where Paul stood up. And motioning with his hand said, Men of Israel and you who fear God, listen. We're going to talk about that. But what I want to say is this. No matter what you're going through, stand for Jesus. Paul stood. Luke stood. Stand for Jesus. Don't worry about tomorrow. Don't worry about anything. But worry, just, just rest in the Holy Spirit because Jesus Christ loves you. Listen, He really does love you no matter what you're going through. Paul was beheaded. Peter was crucified upside down. We got it made. You know, they paved the way for us. The Bible's still here. It's amazing. And Jesus is in love with you. Listen, Paul's going to stand up next week and he's going, to, he's going to say, Men of Israel, you who fear God, listen. And then God of his people, Israel, he's going, to, he's going to explain about Egypt and just the different scenarios. It's going to be radical. Father, we come before you. We thank you for growing in his word, Lord Jesus. We, we pray right now, Lord, and we, we thank you for the listeners and the support, Lord Jesus. We thank you for them continuing to log on and download the sermons. It's amazing, Father. And we pray right now, Lord, that if anyone doesn't know you, Lord, that they come to know you right now. Listen, Jesus says he wants you to have a relationship with him. It's easy. Just receive him. Believe, receive, be done with it. Growing in his word is sponsored by the Holy Spirit. And, and Jesus Christ, we thank you. We thank you for everything that you've done, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm excited. God bless you guys. Thank you for logging on and growing in his word. Until next time, peace be with all you guys. And don't, and don't ever, ever let the enemy rob your joy. God bless you guys. And thank you for growing in his word.